Repeat after me today. Put off the old. Put, off the old. put, on, the put on the new. Again, repeat after me. Put off the old. Put, the old. put on the new. One more time, if you believe in the resurrection of Christ, put off the old and put on the new. Amen. Now, from those verses, I want to focus on, and I want to talk about today for a thought, a new life, a new you. Again, my thought for today, listen to me here. My thought for today is a new life, a new you. And I ask, what does the resurrection of Christ, what does it mean to you? You see, there are two types of resurrection. The first resurrection type that we often think of, if we ever think of resurrection, is the resurrection of the body from the grave, right? You know, we think about Jesus rising from the dead, and then we think of the resurrection at the end, at the last day. That's the one type, the most common type of resurrection that all of us, I imagine all of us, we believe in. Now, within the resurrection of the body, Scripture shows us that there are actually two parts. There's a first resurrection and a second resurrection of the body. The first resurrection that is of the body, Paul, he spoke of when he spoke of the righteous being caught up to meet the Lord in the air in the fourth chapter of first Thessalonians and the 17th verse. Paul, his teaching of the resurrection of the body, the resurrection of the righteous, if you will, it comes from Jesus's promise the promise that he made to the disciples in the 14th chapter of John's gospel, where Jesus, he promised to come again and to receive his followers unto himself so that his faithful followers will be where he is. How many of us are familiar with that, with that statement, that promise from Jesus? Now, the second kind or the second type of resurrection, that is the resurrection of the body, is the resurrection of the condemned. You see, we often, again, we think about the, the righteous being resurrected, but, but we don't give much thought to the condemned being resurrected from the grave. But if you take a look at the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation, and if you ever look at scripture from that chapter that runs from the 11th verse through the 15th verse, the resurrection of the condemned is shown to us. The condemned, we should understand, are all of those who chose not to follow Christ. All of those who chose not to be obedient to the word of God. And in that passage of scripture, we see the condemned, they are standing there, resurrected from the dead. They are resurrected from the grave. They are standing before a great white throne. And the one who is sitting on the great white throne is the Lord. And the Lord is shown to us there, judging the condemned. The condemned, they are raised from the dead not to have life, but to be cast away from the Lord for eternity. So in other words, the condemned, they are resurrected only to die again. That is to die the second death. That is to die the spiritual death. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I don't want to be resurrected just to die again the second death. I don't know about all of you, but I want to be resurrected unto life with the Lord eternal. I, I, I want to be resurrected to have everlasting life in the kingdom of God. Again, I don't know about you today, 
I want to be caught up into the air to meet the Lord in the air. I want to be married to Christ for all of eternity. I want to be the bride of Christ. I want to have my crown. I want to have my righteous garments. And I want to live in his peace. I want to live in his eternal joy. That is the resurrection that I want to be part of. Now, if you want to have part in that resurrection, we must have part in the first kind of resurrection. I told you that there are two types of resurrection. We have seen the resurrection of the body and the two parts of the resurrection of the body, but there is another type of resurrection. In order for us to be caught up with Christ, we must have part in the second type of resurrection that I want to share with you all today. That resurrection, it is the resurrection of the spirit, the resurrection or the renewing of the soul, your soul, if you're following me today. Paul, he spoke of this over in the second chapter of Ephesians. If you're, if you still have your Bibles open to the fourth chapter, all you have to do is turn a few pages back and you'll run into the second chapter there. And if you look at the scripture from the first through the eighth verse there, you'll see where Paul is speaking about the resurrection of the spirit. We will notice there in the fifth verse that Paul, he speaks about how our spirit, how our soul, how it was once dead in trespasses. Now, what we should understand from, from that statement that we're looking at there in the fifth verse is that sin, it corrupts. Sin, it corrupts the soul. Not only does sin corrupt the soul, but if one allows it, sin, it will kill the soul. If one allows it, Sin kills the soul day by day, hour after hour, minute after minute, second after second. But the Lord, he gave the world his only begotten son, didn't he? And the reason why God gave the world his only begotten son was to bring a life to a dying and a dead soul. Do you hear me here today? So as Paul said there in the first verse there in the second chapter of Ephesians, Paul said that Christ has made alive the souls that were dead in trespasses and sins. Again there, pay close attention. Paul said that Christ made alive souls that were once dead in trespasses and sins. So all who believe in the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ, I want you to understand today that we have been made alive in our souls. If you say that you believe in the resurrection of Christ, you have been made alive in your soul thanks to the grace of God. You have been made alive through your faith in Christ, not anything else. There is no other way that your soul can be made alive except through your faith in the only begotten son of God. We're in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. We're in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. If you want to follow along, that's where I'm going to be focusing in on today. Now, we must remember what Jesus, what he once said to Nicodemus. Jesus, when Nicodemus desired to enter into the kingdom of God, Jesus, he said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel in the third verse, he said, unless one is born again, he said, unless one is born again, he cannot see 
the kingdom of God unless one is born again. Now, to clarify this, I want you to understand, Jesus said to Nicodemus, I'm not talking about you being born again through, through a woman. I'm not talking about you being born again physically. Jesus, he said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel in the fifth verse, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So do you desire to enter into the kingdom of God today? Do you desire to enter into heaven? I see some nodding of the heads. If you desire to enter into the kingdom of heaven, if you desire to be resurrected in the body to life, you must be resurrected in your spirit, in your soul first. Your soul, I want you to understand today, it must be renewed. If your soul is dead in trespasses, if your soul is dead in sin, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God and to then enter into the kingdom of God. Let me get an amen on that. Amen. Again, I ask you today, do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Yes. So with those yeses, I don't think I need to ask this next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, since I took the time to type it out. Have you been born again in your soul? Do you believe that you are born again? You see, so many of us, we love to say it. We love to say, I'm a born again believer. But do you know what it means to be a born again believer? What does the resurrection mean to you today? You see, if you believe in the resurrection, and if you say that you are a born again believer, I again say to you today that you are supposed to have a new life. It should be, I should be looking at a new you today. A new you should be moving in this world today. Do you understand what I mean? Let's see again, many love to, to say that they are born again believers, but with every step they take, they make vain the resurrection of Christ. Do you understand what I mean by that? There are many today who love to profess, I'm a Christian. Y'all done heard me say this one a lot, haven't you? There are many today that love to say, I'm a born again believer. But they make vain the cross and the resurrection. They make it, in other words, meaningless. Are you making the resurrection of Christ meaningless today? You see, you and I, we must not make his resurrection. We must not make it meaningless. It should have meaning. It should have purpose in your life and in the life of all of those that love to say that they are born again believers. Now, for those that may be struggling to understand this, join me in turning over to the sixth chapter of Romans I want you to see what Paul, what he said about being born again. Over in the sixth chapter of Romans, from the first through the 14th verse, Paul, he expounded on believers being born again. There in the second verse, Paul, he asked all of those who, like us today, would say that they believe in the resurrection. Paul, he asked there in the second verse, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Uh-oh. Paul, he about to start talking serious to us now. See, the sincere believer, 
ought not still be living in sin. Oh boy. Uh oh. And listen to me closely here. The sincere believer ought not still be living in sin when Christ has given his life to free us from sin. And so with that in mind, look at what Paul said there in the third verse. Again, he had a question for all of those that love to say that they are Christians, that they are born again believers. Paul, he asked, do you not know that we were baptized in Christ's death? Do you not know what you were baptized into when you said that you believed in his resurrection? Is what Paul is asking there. Do you not know? I feel like that's a question that many believers need to be asked today. Because you see, many believers, they seemingly forget or they don't give it much attention. They don't give it much consideration of, of what they have professed to believe in when they say that they are a child of God, when they say that they believe in the resurrection, when they say that they are born again believers. You see, Christ, he gave his life for us for a reason and a purpose. And so for the reason and that purpose, you and I, we ought not be making a mockery of the resurrection of him getting out of the grave. You see, when you choose to still live in sin, you are making a mockery of what God did for you specifically for you. I hope you hear me here today. When you still choose to live in sin, you make a mockery of Christ hanging on the cross, taking on the humiliation of the cross, taking on all the mockery of those that stood and watched and that was laughing at him, that was joking at him. As we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, you are making a mockery of him then getting out of the grave as well. Again, I want you to understand what you're making a mockery out of. Consider the fact that, that Jesus, he died as a sinner. One who was holy and righteous and did no wrongs, did no sin, he died as a sinner. Now, while you are considering that, consider this. While he died as a sinner, did he rise from the grave as a sinner? You see, when Jesus rose from the grave, he said to the disciples, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And I tell you today, there ain't no sinner nowhere that can say that they have authority over heaven. Did y'all hear me? You see, not no sinner would ever be given authority over heaven. Well, a lot of people that like to think that they have authority over heaven today, but they don't have it. So when Jesus rose from the grave, I want you to understand that he rose holy and righteous. That's how he could have authority over heaven. What this means for us is that that when Jesus rose from the grave, there was a change that came over him. Do you understand? He died as a sinner, but he didn't rise from the grave as a sinner. He rose from the grave, holy and righteous. Guess what he left in the grave? He left sin in the grave. So we'll see there, if you still have the sixth chapter of Romans opened up, we'll see there in the ninth verse that Paul, he wrote, Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. He said, death no longer has dominion, he said, over him. 
You see, death, physical death, I want you to understand, it only has dominion over the condemned. Death, the second death, that is the spiritual death, it only has dominion over the sinner. So Jesus, we should understand today, when you say that you believe in the resurrection, Jesus, he gave his life so that sin no longer has dominion over you. Jesus, he gave his life. He rose from the dead so that sin no longer has dominion over you so that the punishment of sin no longer has dominion over you. So as we see Paul say there in the 11th verse there, Paul said that we should consider ourselves dead to sin. We should consider ourselves alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, is what Paul said there. To, to, to make it even more easier for us to understand there, in the fourth verse, Paul, he said, we were buried with Christ through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also, he said there, we raised from the dead. We raised from the dead, from, from sin. And he said there, we should walk in the newness of life. New life, new you, hello. So I ask you today, are you walking in the newness of life? Or does sin still have dominion over you? I think that's something that we have to consider today. Are you a born again? Are you truly a born again believer? Have you been born again in your soul? Or are you still that same sinful person before you said that you believe? See, if you truly believe in the resurrection, I say to you today that you ought not be that same person from yesteryear. If you truly believe in the resurrection, you ought not be the same person that you were yesterday. Sin, I say to you today, sin should no longer define you. Sin should no longer be your identity. Guess what should be your identity? Guess what should define you today? Christ should be your identity, and Christ should be what defines you today. That means that you ought to walk like Christ. That means you ought to talk like Christ. That means that you ought to be, guess what, like Christ. Who do you identify as today? That is what the resurrection, that is what the resurrection of Christ, that is what the resurrection asks of you. Who do you identify as today? The born again believer or the sinner? So, if you desire to live as the new you, let's take a look at a few things that Paul said must be done today. If you turn back over to the fourth chapter of Ephesians with me, we will see what, what Paul said for us to do here so that we don't make vain the resurrection of Christ. We'll see there in the 17th verse, we'll see where Paul, he encouraged believers to first off, no longer walk as others walk in the futility of their mind. That was the first of my key verses for today, right? Again, the first thing that Paul said there, if you desire to, to walk in the newness of life, if you believe in the resurrection, if you would say new life, new me, Paul, he said, don't you be walking as others who walk in the futility. That means the uselessness, the futility of their mind. 
You see, as born again believers, we ought to be abiding by the word of God, shouldn't we? As born again believers, we ought to be, in other words, abiding by the divine truth. Jesus, he told us, he said to us that if we abide by his word, if we abide by the divine truth, Jesus said that the truth will make you what? Oh, I don't hear nothing. I guess y'all don't know that one, huh? Y'all be quick to jump on everything else that I, that I, that I put out there. But y'all don't know that the divine truth will make you free. As I said throughout the series that I preached all of uh, February and March, there's hope in the truth, ain't it? You should be living in that hope. You should be living in that truth. And that hope and that truth, I said in my sermon last week or the week before, I said that that truth is salvation. Our hope is salvation. That was last week, Palm Sunday. Therefore, we as born again believers, we should be marching forward in life in that truth. I said it last week that we should be marching towards that hope. We should be living for that hope. We should be living for that salvation. And I tell you today that you cannot live for that salvation if you're still walking as a sinner. I don't know if you hear me here today. So we'll see there again, Paul, he said there, don't you be walking as others who walk in the futility of their mind. The condemned soul, I don't know if we consider this, but the condemned soul, they walk without hope. They don't have true hope. Is that to say that the sinner, that they don't hope in anything? Uh, people, people have hope. They hope in a lot of things, don't they? But you see, many people, they, they hope for nothing and they don't understand it. Their hope is of the world. Their, their hope is of vanity. That is that their hope is of fleeting riches that, that can do nothing for, for them. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, how many are on their grind and their hustle and, and they proudly boast about being on their grind and their hustle. But they're on their grind and their hustle for vanity, for the fleeting riches that are of this world. Those fleeting riches, they are fleeting because not only is this world passing away, but we are also passing away. And those riches, they can't do anything for you when you pass away. I don't know if you hear me here today. Sister Horton said amen, so I think she's riding with me. Many folks, they, they want those dead presidents, they want them badly to have them in their bank. But what is that bank account going to do for you when you leave this world? Think about it for a moment. What is that house? What is that car? What is all of those clothes, those shoes? What are they going to do for you when you leave this world? You can't carry them with you after this life that you live. It is guaranteed that your life is going to come to an end, as sad as that is to say. And so Paul, he said there in the 18th verse, he said that this kind of mindset that it is darkened because it is alienated from the life that is of God. See, the condemned, they end up wandering blind in their hearts. They end up wandering blind in their hearts to the true blessing that is of God. And because they are blind to the true blessing that is of God, they will end up missing out on the blessing of God. They will end up missing out on salvation. 
Don't miss out on salvation today. Don't go blind to salvation today. Don't end up missing out on God's blessing. Don't go blind to the blessing of God. As we saw in our Sunday school lesson for today, open yourself up to the Lord so that you can receive his promise, so that you can receive his blessing, so that you can walk in his hope. What is most sad about this is, is how the condemned, how the sinner, how they conduct themselves just to gain the fleeting riches of this world. They conduct themselves in a way that tears others down rather than lift up others. Y'all hear me say that all the time. If you don't believe me, again, just take a look around you. Just take a look at the world today. You don't have to look far. Just take a look at how the wickedness of one man tears down others, will bring others down just to lift himself up higher and above the rest. See, if you truly believe in the resurrection of Christ, I hope that you don't think that it is okay for you yourself to bring others down just to lift yourself up. If you say that you, you believe in Christ, if you go around and you say that you are a Christian, if you say that you are a born again believer, I hope that you don't support those that believe in tearing others down just to lift themselves up. I hope, I hope you hear me here today. Let's see, again, as Paul say, I say to you today, this new you, this new you must stop walking as a sinner. You see, that's, that's the stuff of what sinners do. If you believe in the resurrection of Christ, I again, say to you today, stop walking as a sinner and stop supporting a sinner as well. Especially if you love to say that you are a child of the most high. I get tired of hearing all these folks go around talking about they're a child of the most high, that they, that they are Christians. And then they go out and they sin worse than sinners do, and they'll even support sinners. Therein, my key verse for today, we'll see Paul, he tells us very plainly, if you believe in the resurrection, Paul, he said there very plainly, put off your former conduct. He didn't miss any words there. He said, put off your former conduct. Again, you have a new life, right? You believe in the resurrection of Christ. You said you were baptized and that you were born again believer, right? You believe in the resurrection of Christ, so you have a new life. And in this new life, why should you still be out there living as a sinner? Why should you still be out there trying to live as the old you did when you lived as a sinner? There in the 19th verse, Paul, he tells us that the old you was given over to lewdness and to work all uncleanness with greediness. Think about that for a moment. Given over to lewdness and to work all, not some, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Do you think that conduct is fit for one who says that they are a born again believer? They got a couple of no's there. See, we were once given over to such conduct, but that conduct, again, it should be left in the past. We, we said that we born again believers, right? You said that you believe in the baptism, right? Uh, thank you. And I'm not talking about the baptism of the Lord. I'm talking about the baptism of the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. If you believe in it, 
That that sin should be way that that sin for you should be way back there. And I have to talk to myself on that one. But you see, that old man, that sinful man, he'd be right here. We, we don't do a good job of, of putting him off of us. Paul, he tells us there in the 25th verse, he said that, again, if you believe in the resurrection, Paul, he said, why don't you put away that lie? Put away that old lying tongue. I think a lot of folks need to hear this one today. They ain't going to hear it, but they need to hear it. You see, James, he wrote that the tongue is a fire in a, in a world of iniquity, James said. He said that the tongue, he said it is an unruly evil. That it is full of deadly poison is what James said. You see, the, the lying tongue, listen to me closely here today. The lying tongue, it creates a whole bunch of mess. The lying tongue, it creates a whole bunch of, of confusion as well. You see, in all of the confusion, there comes division. And within divisions, there is, there never will be peace. I don't know if you hear me here today. So many folks, they go out there and they talk about how they want to, to bring about peace. But how can they bring about peace when they're full of lies? I don't know if you hear me here. Oh, pastor working on something. I don't know if you caught it yet. I hope you have. Just take a look at what the lying tongue is doing today. You see, some men, they rejoice at creating mass hysteria. Some, they rejoice at creating division. Some, they rejoice at, at creating confusion. These frauds and these scammers, they love to go out and they love to say that they are a child of God. They love to say that they're Christians. They'll even hold up a Bible on TV. They'll even thump the Bible. But these frauds and these scammers of faith, we shouldn't pay them any attention. Because, you see, they rejoice in spread and darkness. And a child of God shouldn't have any part in spread and darkness. I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, we born again believers, we are supposed to be lights in the world. New life, new you. You're supposed to be a light in the world. I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, born again believers aren't supposed to be the authors of confusion, are they? No, the child of God, the Christian, the born again believer ought to be an author of peace. An author of love. You know why that is? Because God himself is the author of peace. The author of love. Not only that, but the author of truth. Guess what you should be today? The born again believer, therefore, should put away that lying tongue. The born again believer should also remove themselves from those that love to lie. Stop paying those liars any attention. Get away from them. Has your soul been renewed today? Are you a born again believer? We see Paul, he said to those who stole in their past life, Paul said, stop doing it. Still no longer. And we should understand there are more ways to steal than the one that we often think of when you go in and you take something. There are more ways to steal than that. We should understand that, that Paul, he said, be honest. Do honest work. Live an, an honest life is what Paul was saying there. And even more when it comes to living that honest life, Paul, he said there in the 29th verse, Again, if you believe in the resurrection, if you, if you believe that you are a new you, Paul said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Again, look at that 
closely what Paul said there. He said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Now, some of us, we, we may try to tie lying, that lying tongue in, into, into this statement here from Paul, but Paul, he had moved past the liar. He said, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Let's think about that for a moment. There is a way that we should speak to each other. There is a way that we should speak to one, one another. That way is with kindness, with love, with dignity, and with respect, with honor. Do you do that today? Sadly, we, we live in a world where speaking with dignity and honor, that's mocked. You know what's celebrated in our world today? Harmful and foul language. The more foul you are with your language, the more harmful you are with your language and putting others down. More, more, more. It's celebrated in our world today. It, it, it honestly, for me, I don't know about the rest of you, but it's bizarre to me at, at, at the conduct that is now applauded and celebrated and laughed at in our world like it's a big joke. Is that what life is? Is life all of a sudden a joke? There are many who will say that they are born again believers, but they are quick to tear others down with their mouth. They are quick to use foul language. They are quick to use hurtful and harmful language. They are quicker to do it than the sinner is. Now, I know that many of you will frown at this thought, but I tell you today that such language is unbecoming of a child of God. It is unbecoming. That's not a big word. It is unbecoming of a child of God. In other words, it is not fitting. It is not fit for one who is a child of God. So what words should the born again believer? What words should the child of God? What words should we share? Paul, he said it best there in the 29th verse. He said, what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to hearers. We were saved by grace. We were saved by love, the love of God. Therefore we should move out of that grace and we should speak out of that grace as well. Speak to uplift. We, you hear me say that all the time, but I mean it. New life, new you. And on that same note, Paul, he said there in the 31st verse, if you believe in a resurrection, he said that the new you should let all bitterness, wrath, and anger be put away from you with all malice. That is with all disgust, bitterness, wrath, anger. It should disgust you to see people that move out of bitterness, anger, and wrath. You shouldn't be applauding it if you are a born again believer. If you feel yourself beginning to move out of bitterness, anger, and wrath, it should disgust you and you should put it away from you. Do you understand why it is so important for you, the born again believer, the one who professes it, but also the one who confesses it. Do you understand why it is so important for you to put these things away from you? Yes, because we believe in the resurrection. Yes, because we have a new life. Yes, because it's a new us. It's a new you, right? However, look at what Paul said there in the 30th verse. Paul, he said there in the 30th verse, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. See, I think something that many of us believers, I think something that we often forget today is that the Holy Spirit has made a home with us. 
The Holy Spirit abides with you. To the Corinthians, Paul, he said, do you not know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit? I, I, I feel like we forget that sometimes. That the Holy Spirit is, is within us. In other words, I believe that we forget that God is with us. Not sometimes. The Lord said he'll never leave nor forsake us. God is with us all the time. And, and I feel like some of us, we forget that. Paul, he said to the Corinthians, he said, you were bought at a price. Do you remember that you were bought at a price? That the only begotten son of God, that he gave his life for you? You see, when we see it, it grieves, it hurts the Holy Spirit. Our goal today as born again believers, our goal should be to live in harmony. That is to live in fellowship, to live in peace with the Lord, because he has brought us peace through his only begotten son. So why don't we do that today? How can there be harmony? How can there be peace if we are living in sin and we're grieving the Holy Spirit? So I asked at the very start of this message today, do you believe in the resurrection of Christ? Do you believe Jesus is the resurrection? Do you believe that he is the life? If I'll say yes. You have heard me say that the word of God demands that action, haven't you? The one who revealed the word to us is Christ. And Christ being a stumbling block, he forces us to make a choice today. You see, the resurrection, it forces you to choose your identity. Will you be a born again believer or will you be a sinner? Will you live a new life, a new you, or will you live as the old you? You see, the new you should be putting forth some effort today. The new you should be putting forth the effort of faith. The new you should be putting forth the effort to become holy and righteous. Are you doing that today? So I call on all of us born again believers today to walk in the newness of life. We should stop living in the past. Your identity should now be Christ, I say to you today. So rather than having that lying tongue, you should have a tongue that is of the truth, that speaks the truth. The born again believer shouldn't speak fables. We should speak the truth. The born again believer shouldn't be speaking gossip. We shouldn't be speaking rumors. We shouldn't be speaking conspiracies. We shouldn't be speaking. We should be sharing the word of God, the divine truth. Paul, he made it very clear that the born again believer, he said there in the 27th verse, he said that the born again believer ought not be given place to the devil. Don't you be given place to the devil today. The devil, we must remember, is the father of sins. And Jesus said of Satan that he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth that is in him. We have the truth in us. We are born again believers. So rather than being imitators of Satan, Paul, if you turn over to the fifth chapter of Ephesians and the first verse there, you'll see that Paul said you ought to be an imitator of God. And how do we imitate God? Paul, he again said that we ought to walk in love as Christ has loved us. This is something that all of us, we need to hear today, especially all of us who love to say that we are Christians, all of us who love to say that we are God's children. Many love to say that they are born again believers, but their speech is filled with lies. Their speech is filled with corrupt words. Again, the sad part about all of this is that there are many who love to say that they are God's children, 
but they are doing nothing but spreading darkness. They aren't spreading any light in the world today. If you truly believe in the resurrection of Christ, you ought to be spreading light in this world today. And in order for you to spread light in this world today, you ought to be walking in love today. You ought to walk in love and you ought to walk in the truth that is of God. Amen. 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 Hey there. Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this week's sermon. I hope again that you took something out of this week's sermon that you can apply it to yourself and that you can walk in it, that you can live by faith. Make sure that you share this week's message. Make sure you're sharing it with someone somewhere. And again, I hope that you'll come back for next week's sermon. Make sure that you're following the channel so that you don't miss the next notification for next week's sermon so that you don't miss a notification for the Sunday school lessons, the Bible studies, or the food for thoughts as well. Make sure that you're following the channel today.